Well, that's brains. Is he brains? He's brains. He's the intelligence of the whole. He makes things go up, makes things go down at the right time. Yeah. He builds things. Yeah, he, he can't handle his own particular. He's a bit like uh, uh, Michael we saw the other night. Um, he can't handle his own particular. When, he's, when his feet are on the ground, he gets into the, in relationships of one kind or other. He's absolutely hopeless. But uh, <laughs> when he's got a, a set square in front of him and a diagram and a blueprint, he can he's do away. Anything. Everything happens. Yeah, now, lovely. He, you've also the same fellow plays Parker, so it's the same. Oh, it's chap. the same voice. <clears throat> well, hopefully not the same, quite the same voice. But David Graham can—he's got a whole repertoire yeah. of voices that he drags out and stuns everybody with. So he right. is the voice of Parker and Brains, and That's then right. next to him, who's Virgil? That? Virgil. Yeah. And what did Virgil do? Virgil. Now, which which aircraft is? Uh, I need a point of reference here, and nobody's got it. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, he's, well, he's he's. Uh, he, now, Virgil is, is uh, let's Thunderbird 2. Let's have a look on here. Let's have a look. Virgil see what is that big green, uh, the big green giant. Now, th was that Number Thunderbird two. 2? There we Thunderbird go. Thunderbird 2. Thunderbird 2. Here's Thunderbird 2. Look, Pearl, look, piloted by Virgil Tracy is the That's firefighter right. that carries all of the international rescue, ingenious heavy engineering equipment. Yes. Got it? I got it. That's him. When we come down <laughs> to Earth, we wait an awful lot more than when we are up. <laughs> 25,000 And it feet. says, with a maximum flying speed of 5,000 miles per hour, yeah. Thunderbird 2 is 250 feet long, has a wingspan yeah. of 180 feet, and stands 60 feet high. It's hard to park. <laughs> hard it's to really, park. Yeah. It is. Hard to park. Now, so you've got all of these. So you yeah. you actually, um, the spearhead of, of all the, the craft was Thunderbird yeah. 1. I guess he was, yeah. And that was yeah. that's your craft, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Scott Traces. Yes. Okay, well, let's go back <clears throat> to the photos because you're all going mad for those. Now, they're all going to be signed personally by Shane Rimmer there, who, of course, was that wonderful, infamous voice of Scott Tracy. 20% <laughs> approaching 20% approaching of the, car, uh, the, the stock of the cast, <clears throat> the whole cast there of <clears throat> Thunderbirds, 419291 at £23.00 and 90p. Now we also have, I, I have to say, this is my favourite photo. Is it? Yeah. yeah I, like I like it. That one. I like it because I can see you as well. Elegante. Elegante. Very, very, very yeah. good. Let's have a little look why. Because what you've got here, this is a Scott Tracy and Shane Rimmer photo because you've got Scott Tracy here. That's a really good one of him as well, isn't it? Yeah. And then splendid. as we move down, you've got that wonderful Thunderbirds logo. He put and him in his place, didn't he? Look, and then over to the other side, you've got, there we go, the lovely Shane Rimmer, who was the voice ah. of Scott Tracy. Did you enjoy doing it? Ah, I loved it. Now, it's how... a great bunch. I mean, it, as I say, it, it was a bit like a radio play. You all gathered around the microphone, and you read it. Yeah. What they did then was when they had the soundtrack. Now, this is 30 years ago, okay, so they didn't have this yeah. sort of sophistication. They had a, a, a like a Morse code. You know how you used to send Morse code? Yeah. The ship was sinking. So beep, 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 beep. Well, what they would do, the people in the sound department, they would listen to your speech rhythm. And they would get to know it very well after yeah. two or three weeks. And they would tap out the rhythm, which made and broke the current, which had was they had a, a little gizmo in, in here, which uh, raised and lowered the jaw. It didn't go that way. Yeah. All it did was just go up and down. Yeah. But that was enough. And they, they, they simulated the movement here to the speech rhythm. Oh. And sometimes it was uncanny. You couldn't really tell because the motion was there. Um, they didn't smile much, but that didn't. So that but was why the heads of the puppets were actually not in relation. They were a bit bigger in the early ones well, than the bodies. How, I think that was a great, great, whether it happened by accident or not, I don't think so. I think Jerry had this whole thing planned very meticulously. <laughs> that, I mean, they're not quite right. No, but in the late 60s, they got better, didn't they? Well, I think they weren't right on, on purpose. <laughs> well, <laughs> all, the, all the mechanism was in there, though, wasn't it? Well, the, the, what, what uh, regulated and, and motivated all this was just in the jaw. Yeah. You see? So when they made, an, it was an electric current going through. Yeah. When they broke it, the jaw would go uh, Open. up. When, I, when they closed it, the jaw would go down. So that movement synchronized with the... With uh, your speech, pattern. With the speech. Yeah. Made it, made it work. Yeah. Later, they got more sophisticated, and they, you know, they were now, all that studio did, So, I mean, was, it, was Jerry Anderson very much involved with the recording process? Absolutely. Let was me he? Let me tell you. Was he? Yes chomping away in his Mars bars and telling us what... Another chocolate bars are available? Yeah, <laughs> it was his... Uh, J Jerry delegated a lot of things. I mean, he didn't didn't really write them. He had ideas. 
And he had the original ideas, a mm. fellow called Tony Barwick. Beautiful fellow and a damn good writer, too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, and then Sylvia would look after wardrobe, most of the casting. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Jerry just sort of presided over things. But it was his idea. And he would uh, keep the, the characters true to form. Yep. So, I mean, you, you had a host of writers. I even wrote a couple of those things. And, and uh, so the, the, the guidelines got a little bit loose yeah. sometimes. But he was always there to uh, be referred to, to. And to pull the reins in. To pull the reins in. Yeah. Was he a nice man? He's fine. He's, He's fine. fine. Well, I mean, you, you like working with a successful project. We, we but, I mean, how, how, many, how long were you involved with Thunderbirds? How long was your working experience with them? Well, you know, they only made one series. It's astounding. They made, now, mind you, that series, as I say, started off at, uh, I think, 36 half hours. We went back into the studio and then <coughs> elongated it to an hour. Yeah. So I guess it maybe took a couple of years. Wow. All in all. But... All those uh, episodes of, St of uh, Thunderbirds came out of that one series. Okay, well, I'll tell you what we've got now. We've got a clip standing by for you, and it's called Trapped in the Sky. Now, this is from volume one of this box set. Now, let me bring that in for you, because this is the, the, the box set of VHS videos here. It's a box of nine videos. It's the complete Thunderbird. Wow, look at that. Did you see that? Do you want I to missed see it again? It. Right, look, I'll show you again. Ready? Okay. Don't blink. Look, ready? Steady. We open it up. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, we that's... have liftoff. 419130 is your item number, but let's have a little look at this clip. Trapped in the sky. <laughs> TV, isn't it? Oh, right, right, right at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and they had these lovely names, Carano. And the, Carano. And the, 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 Carano. God, he used to wake up. That thing, that voice used to be resounding all over the place. Uh, the this, hood was the villain. But this was like, this was in 66 different countries around the world. Yeah. So, I mean, your voice was listened to by millions of people. I guess it was, yes. And it was so new and, and such a... Uh, it, it didn't have any sort of precedent, really. Mm. And because it was slightly off track, I yeah. mean, you know, you knew you were looking at a puppet. You, you'd pass a monitor with uh, Captain Scarlet, and, you know, you, you would think it was a, a human on there because the, the, the form is absolutely the way But also at the time, it was very uh, pioneering, wasn't it? Yeah. It was pioneering technology that actually... I mean, made the series so, not only were the storylines great, yeah, they were but you good. had amazing yeah. characters, you had yeah. amazing puppeteers, which really started everything. I mean, when you think of puppeteers that, that have, since then, things, you know, like the Muppets, and, yeah. and I mean, it really was the forerunner of all it of that, wasn't it? It opened up a lot. It, it opened did. Up a lot. And also, yeah. the, um, also the, the sort of the movements. And yeah. the, uh, not animatronic, <coughs> um, they called it, what do they call it? Puppetry. <laughs> no, it was called something else. Sequanimation. Uh, super sequ marionation. Sequ super that, marionation. That was the film. I mean, it, it, uh, the only thing we couldn't do was go through a doorway <laughs> because you got stopped by you the strings. Because you got the strings, exactly. But uh, he was, uh, again, it was Jerry's uh, uh, creative brain. All, all the uh, Thunderbird pilots were named after astronauts. Right. Alan, Virgil, Gordon, Scott. Yeah, there were. There was one other. Okay, should we find out who they yeah. were? Let's have a little <laughs> look. You've got Gordon Tracy. 
Yep. You've got Scott Tracy, Virgil Tracy, yes. Alan Tracy, yes. and John Tracy. John. There we go. John was the one. He, he always oh, hiding somewhere in a cloud <laughs> bank. Well, he actually, something. he was in Thunderbird 5. Yeah. He was permanently up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he I don't know what he did, station, but he wasn't did. He? Hey? he was up in the space station. Yeah, up there. that's right. That's right. So <laughs> well, we didn't see him very often. We sent him emails and things like that. No, well, let's have a little look. We're going back to the photograph here. There you can see there's your Scott Tracy and Shane Rimmer <coughs> photo signed by Shane himself. And there it's got Fab. Now, nobody knew what Fab was, did they? Well, not for sure. <laughs> you couldn't bet too much money on it because somebody was going to argue with it. Do you think it was because of Fabulous? Well, that's what I always thought. I mean, it seemed to fit the situation. Obviously. And it was very popular in the 60s, wasn't it? Fab. Yeah. Oh, it was. But orders were understood. Yes. That's what it was said to mean. I think so. I now, think what, so. what year was this set in? It was, it was set in, well, actually, not so, so, so long for <coughs> us now, is it, really? No. 2065? Around there, around yeah. the turn turn of this century, maybe because all the vehicles and the and the uh, environment were all about this sort of. And their mission was science. to save the world from disaster, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, God, could we use them now? And they were calling international rescue. Yeah, calling international rescue. See, yes. I remember that, and and that lady Penelope, well, she was so glamorous, and she drank lots of tea, didn't she? Constantly. All the time. Yeah, Parker made it. Parker, tea. Yep. But she oh, was yeah, always she was drinking yeah. her tea. And that voice was absolutely glorious. It just fit the character. Perfect. Beautifully, yeah. But she was also, yeah. I mean, when you think of it at the, the time, the 60s and 70s, that gorgeous, glamorous look with the bouffon hair. Oh, yeah. That is so amazing. Let's have a look <coughs> at the photograph here. And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, there you can see. There's the cast photo. And again, this is signed by Shane Rimmer himself. Now... Uh, she was actually allegedly based on, on Sylvia Anderson, wasn't she? I would think that's a very distinct possibility, yeah. Did she look like that? Yeah. <laughs> How about that one, Sylvia? Yes, she does. She, there we go. There yeah. you can see. Now, that's 419-2914, 419-291. And now, apparently, one of our cameramen, Nick, has actually met... Mrs. Anderson, and said that she does look like Lady yeah, Penelope. Penelope. There we go. So we've yes. had that from two people here. 419291. It's the whole cast of Thunderbirds, and that's the photo signed by Shane Rimmer there. Now, the, the Thunderbird, the, the set <coughs> of Thunderbirds, there was Thunderbird 1 to Thunderbird 5, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was the aim, apart from saving the world, what, what was the aim of the series? Well, just to have uh, uh, a source, a place that you could get in touch with, contact, if yeah. you were really in trouble and nobody else could do it. I mean, they got into the most ridiculous, not ridiculous, but I mean, the, the, uh, the situation which looked hopeless. Yeah. And nobody had the machinery to do much about it, except these, uh, this colony of uh, five brothers on Tracy Island who could go at the speed of light, and so mm. wherever you were, they could reach you, <laughs> and usually just in the very nick of time. Just in the nick of just time. Just in the nick of time. And you were always yeah. left in, in suspense, weren't you? Well, I mean, rumor has it, because, I mean, they, this was filmed at Bray Studios, um, yeah. and I, I've actually done a few commercials there myself, going back a few years. It's a lovely old studio, yeah, it's isn't fantastic. it? fantastic. Now, yeah. apparently Parker was taken from, uh, there's a this is allegedly, this is um, a rumor, that there's um, a, a pub nearby, a local pub, yes. and there was uh, David Graham was actually asked to go to that pub to go and see him, to because that's how Parker was sort of oh there was a set there on. was a Parker character mm, similar mm, yeah. Pat, well that's what that's allegedly I'm look I'm sure it, I'm sure it happens because some of these faces were modelled after the people, people who ended up with a part yeah 